Welcome to episode number one of Reactor Blocks Prime's patch tutorial. This is going to be a two part tutorial series where we explore West Coast synthesis patching techniques made popular by synthesizers like the Buchla and the Surge. In this episode, we're going to explore each module and build a patch step by step. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started by changing our clock position to internal if it's on external. 16th notes, and we're going to move our BPM down to, let's see, um, we'll do 92 beats per minute. So basically every time you hit play, it's going to move the clock a position, it's going to send a gate out in 16th notes. So we'll take the gate out of the clock into the gate in of the clock divider. So when you hit play, the 16th notes will trigger the clock divider and you'll get divisions of your 16th note clock. Okay, so we're going to hit play and we're going to pick a gate out. Let's see, we're going to pick um, divide by 2. So take your gate out of the clock divider, gate 2 out, into gate X in on the XYS sequencer. And you'll notice the sequencer is now moving at the same rate of the clock dividers, division um, number two, gate number two. Okay, we're going to go up here to our mixer and we're going to go mixer out left and mixer out right into the main output. This output represents your sound card and, and what you'll be hearing out of your speakers. So now we're going to click on this right output and make a copy of that and send that to the input of our scope. That way we can see our waveforms when we start building our, our patch. So now we're going to go over here to the DWG dual oscillator and we're going to check out these frequency knobs and timbre section. And um, the output M is for the modulation output, out C is for carrier, and out T is for the timbre output. So we're going to start out with the red section, the timbre output. So timbre out, we're going to patch timbre out into low pass gate in. Now we're going to take our low pass gate output and patch that into the mixer left input and low pass gate out into mixer right input. So now we're going to raise the level of the low pass gate so we can hear the DWG oscillator through the speakers. And if you look down to the right at our scope, you'll notice that a sine wave has formed. So this is how we can, we can analyze and look at the waveforms as we start shaping the waves and, and manipulating the sound. So now we're going to start experimenting with this timbre section. And you'll notice um, on the scope as I change settings that the shape will start to change. So let's move the wave shaper now. So as you can see, this knob actually shapes the waveform. Next, we're going to experiment with the symmetry knob. This changes the symmetry of the wave. So next, we're going to mess with the combination of the wave shaper and the symmetry to come up with some different results and start to shape and move this waveform. Okay, actually, let's go over to the frequency knob and pull up the frequency a bit and dial in more of a bass tone. And then we'll continue to experiment with the shape and the symmetry. So the last control in the timbre section is the wave folder. If you look down at the scope, you can start folding the wave onto itself and it creates some really complex waveforms. 
like Batman to Bart Simpson's hair to like total chaos in a matter of seconds. So yeah, just experiment with all three of these controls and, and design a waveform that sounds right to you. So it's really cool, you know, designing sounds and, and, and getting the waveforms moving, but, um, you know, you only have two hands, so if you want to automate some of this movement and to animate these waveforms, you need to start using an LFO to animate this timbre section. So we're going to click on A and open our modulation bus and um, get to modulating these frequencies, basically um, using an LFO to turn these knobs up and down automatically so you can animate these waveforms without, you know, being limited to what your two hands can do. So as you can see on the LFO, there's different waveforms. We're going to pick the triangle and we're going to move the, f the hertz down to, let's see, like seven, oh, we'll do like 11 hertz. So this is kind of a slow LFO. You can see the LED is, is moving at the rate of the LFO. So we're going to take the output of the LFO into the modulation bus A of the DWG. You can see the LED on modulation bus corresponds to the rate of the LFO's LED. So now we're going to pull this up to see how much modulation we want to add to this modulation channel. So basically that's how much the knob is going to turn. You can see that indicated by the black arrow. Now we're going to go over to our second LFO and we're going to pull this down, the frequency down to make this a little slower. Let's see, we'll do this one at yeah, 24 hertz. So take the output of this LFO and put that into the DWG modulation B. Now click on the B modulation, which is up here. And then that will access you know, all the modulation for the B modulation bus. So you can animate the shape and the waveform with a different LFO to get some different results and to really get this waveform moving. Thank you for tuning in to episode number one of Reactor Blocks Prime's patch tutorial where we explored waveform animation using the LFO and the timbre section of the DWG. Stay tuned for episode number two where we finish this patch and explore the XYS sequencer, the CFG envelope generator, and the rounds reverb. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell button. We'll be back with part two in a couple of days. Thank you.